two, one. They are screaming up towards the Carmen line. You can see the speedometer on your bottom left there, as well as the altimeter. And we're going to follow along with the flight on the left side of your screen with those milestones. First one coming up here is Max Q. dynamic pressure it's when the forces on the vehicle between the atmosphere and the speed are at their our maximum we punch right through it as well as punch through that layer of clouds the vehicle continues on its upward ascent towards space If you are just joining us, we have had a clean liftoff of New Shepard's 26th flight in this program. We are witnessing the eighth human space flight of New Shepard. We have astronauts 38 through 43 on the vehicle on its way to space. Our next milestone here is main engine cutoff. And what we'll witness is the speed will start to come down, but the uh, the excel excuse me the the altitude will continue to go up. When the speed hits zero, it means we have hit apogee. And Jackie, I think a, a, one of the other cool part of this program is that we slow. You see that kind of slight little hot dog roll. <laughs> <laughs> we got going on of the rocket. We just want to give. Well, it, it's really is just to give the astronauts uh, each a 360 degree view as they're going up, which is so cool. All right, main engine cutoff and separation have been confirmed. And Jackie, this is when our, our astronauts are feeling zero G. Dr. Rob Furl is gonna start his, his experiments up there in the cabin. Hopefully after a little time to look out the window. Yeah, Pre-experimentation. I would <laughs> totally steal at least a, a, a couple of looks out of the big gorgeous windows. And again, we're coming up on Apogee. You see that the speed is reducing. When it hits zero, that's when we've hit. That is when we've hit Apogee. At this point, we are well over the Carmen line, about 328,000 or 100 kilometers, 328,000 feet or 100 kilometers up. And there it is, Apogee about 340,000 feet. Jackie, can you imagine the view? I was talking about being jealous of your astronaut training, but I'm more <laughs> jealous of them right now. <laughs> no, they're unbuckled at the moment. They are turning their somersaults. They are soaking it in they are you know we're witnessing six people having their minds blown right now as we speak but the booster is heading on down and it will beat the the capsule back to earth the booster of course has a controlled landing on a landing pad just two miles north of where it's taken off from the capsule 
less aerodynamically shaped, will uh, will land second under three parachutes uh, in our uh, landing zone in our valley in West Texas. So far, a nominal flight of our 26th mission to space and back of the New Shepard vehicle plus our eighth human space flight. Congratulations truly to all six of our astronauts today. Oh, I'm sorry, our crew who officially have become astronauts. That's right. Massive congratulations. Over the Carmen line. Phoenix, report status. All six astronauts are back in their seat and the booster is screaming on home. Yeah, as we mentioned, that booster is going to return to Earth a lot faster than the capsule because of the aerodynamic nature of the crew capsule. Look at this coming back through the clouds. <laughs> That's a sweet view of the booster as it's coming back through the atmosphere here. So we see the drag brakes have been deployed. There's the relight of that BE3 engine. That gorgeous hover above the landing pad. And booster touchdown, a successful touchdown of the booster for the NS-26 mission. Always a sight to see. Always a sight to see. Real, I mean, it's been going thousands of miles per hour, and then it comes in landing. You see it just kind of hovers there at five miles an hour. It's such a smooth descent, and it's in landing. And to as, as a reminder to people, this is so critical to the reusability because the the smoother the landing, the less you jostle the rocket, the less you have to refurbish the rocket, the more you can more uses you can get out of the rocket. Absolutely. And some some really cool things here, right? Like those fins you were talking about earlier, our lessons learned with guiding this vehicle back are going to be applied to our next big vehicle, New Glenn. So again, just so many lessons learned from this booster every single mission every single mission now the the crew capsule is obviously also coming back down to land here uh we are going to have first the drogue parachutes that come out those are kind of like the guide parachutes then we're going to see the mains they will reef so they're going to kind of go out just a little bit and then they fully inflate and talk about cutting speed you can already see the speed on the the on the the screen there it comes in at just like 15 16 miles an hour for nice so there she is and again these parachutes both the drogues and the mains are essential in providing a gentle touchdown for the capsule but as we get closer to the ground here, you're going to see a retro thrust system on the base of the capsule, um, which does kick up a bit of West Texas dust, but it makes for an even smoother touchdown. Then again, you know, like you said, the already slow speed that the capsule is descending at now. We're just 400 feet away from touchdown. Ooh. 
Again, stay tuned for that retro thrust system here. And crew capsule touchdown, welcome home to the newest six astronauts, the Blue Steel team. Once more, what appears to be a completely smooth flight for New Shepard. Uh, our booster touching down at the, at the landing pad in a soft landing for our latest crew.